everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. Today I am here to thoroughly horrify and terrify you with my hands because they are dyed pink in all the creases and crinkles of my <laughs> fingernails and my hands. So I apologize. Probably for the next two videos you're going to be seeing a lot of the result of avocado dyeing, but I'm here to share my results because I had a lovely day yesterday of avocado dyeing and I did all sorts of stuff. So let's start with crinkly things. So these are my, um, they're huge, they don't even fit in camera, but these are my bottom on my tray parchment papers that, um, this one has a doily that was sitting on it to be um, to be dyed, and you'll see that there are um, flecks of like really dark color. So I guess I could give you a quick rundown before I jump into everything I've dyed here, or I could just talk about it while I go. These are the parchment uh, pieces um, that I that I avocado dyed. So I'll talk a little bit about my process, how I get the best color out of avocado dyeing, um, and I'll just show you these crinklies. This is a little bit of um, pencil crayon that, that was on one of the papers that I dyed, which gave me a whole other idea about something else I want to try dyeing. Um, so yeah, we have lots of beautiful papers. These crinklies make amazing pages and journals. So some are speckly. Some really got a really, like, look at the inside. It's not amazing. They really got covered beautifully. This looks like... This is the outside mainly that I'm showing you, but the inside's even darker. So, yeah. Okay, let me just clear away these loud crinklies. Okay, calm blue ocean again. Hold on. And then I will talk to you a little bit about this. So, um, you can get a beautiful pink range of different pinks um, from dyeing very simply um, with avocados. So I guess I'll go through quickly my rundowns of avocado dyeing. So number one, um, use black avocados, not green ones. So make sure that they're ripe. Um, then you're going to cut them open and you're going to scoop out all the green and make a beautiful guacamole. Make sure it has a lot of lime juice, a lot of cilantro. Yum. Then take what's left over. That means your nuts as well as your, um, your skins. Now you don't have to scrape them to death on the inside to get all of that green out. It doesn't matter. You're going to strain this later anyhow. So um, let me just grab some paper here as I talk to you and I'll just flip through and show you some of my results. So once you've got your skins and your, and your nuts, throw your skins in a pot and then take your nut and cut it in half. Now be extremely careful doing this. Um, if you have like a rubberized mat or something, you can sit your nut on, especially if it's still all slimy from the avocado, to cut it in half. You don't want it to slide and then you hit your fingers with the knife. So just be super careful doing this. But you really do need to cut open that nut to get the good pink because the, mo the majority of the pink actually does come from the inside of the nut. These have some spots on them. This is from a large pan that I have that it's kind of helped me develop my signature when I'm doing my dyeing of my paper. You'll often see spots in the paper that I dye. Um, so then once you've got your nuts cut in half, throw them in the pot with your peels. So then once everything is in the pot, you're going to fill the pot with water right above, you know, a little bit above the line, maybe an inch to an inch and a half above the line of avocados and nuts. Um, I'd recommend using an entire, like a bag, like eight avocados if you can, um, to get a good amount of um, material to create, you know, a good amount of dye. So um, once you've got it covered in water, bring it to a boil. Let it boil for about 10 minutes or so, but not too much because you don't want to boil off all of the water. Um, then just bring it down to a simmer. And, you know, hopefully you've got enough water that, you know, you feel like you're going to have, you know, about, I would say, um, I'm trying to think of how to 
I'd say like at least eight cups of water, right? So hopefully a little more because you want a good consistency. Like your pot should be about this full of both water and avocado. Um, so let it just simmer on low for an hour or two. The longer the better and you will start to see that color mature. Now once you get to the end of boiling and the beginning of simmering, just stop for a moment. Add about two tablespoons of vinegar. That's going to help to just preserve um, your dye if you want to refrigerate it, if you can't use all of it right away. It's just going to be a preservative. Um, if you do want to keep some of your dye, do keep it in a jar in the fridge. Um, don't keep it out because it will develop mold um, over probably a week. It will develop mold even with vinegar. Alcohol, rubbing alcohol is an option and to keep it a little longer. It will probably last about three weeks with rubbing alcohol. Um, this is sketchbook paper. What I showed you before was coffee or sorry, copy paper, but this is sketchbook paper. Um, so then once you've got your vinegar dumped in, also add about a teaspoon of baking soda. The baking soda is going to essentially help to rise the pinkness out of the pit of the avocado and that's how you're really going to get this more burgundy color um, just by the way that the baking soda as well as the vinegar change the dye. So eventually you're going to allow that to keep simmering until what you see is a very nice darker shade um, of, of avocado dye. Then you just basically strain it again, um, or, or strain, you know, you're straining for the first time. So you're straining it now into another pot. Um, you've gotten rid of the, all, the, the, um, all of the peels and the pits and they're sitting in a strainer basket now. So throw the peels away and then take the pits, put them back into the strained, um, liquid, add another bit of water to just top up your dye a bit. You'll see how much you can add without really washing it out. I would say probably you can add up to half of what you already have there. Throw the nuts back in the pot, allow it to simmer for another hour or two. If you can let it sit overnight after it's fully simmered um, to just fully cool, you will develop even more color. So I, I recommend you experiment and you play with that. You're going to get beautiful results anyhow. Even if you just get a light pink, you're going to get beautiful results. So let me show you some other things that I dyed. Um, I dyed a lot of paper. And I still have some dye left. So FYI, I probably dyed, um, I don't know, probably close to 100 pieces of copy and sketchbook paper. Um, a few doilies, uh, probably a dozen pieces of parchment, and then I had some coloring book pages. Now, these had been colored on. I thrifted these, but I thought, let's see what happens, and I'm in love with this. It now makes me want to play with, um, you know, just getting colors of different kinds wet, be that wax crayon, pencil crayon, markers, different things and seeing what happens. And then the cool thing was this was on the same tray as this. So it bled onto here, which I think is amazing. Um, so this was just a nature coloring book. Um, I think I have the cover here somewhere. I do right here. So if you're looking for this coloring book, it's called amazing nature. Um, so it has butterflies and all sorts of beautiful things, florals, birds, lots of birds. So to show you all of these because they're dragonflies, bees and flowers, and these are double sided. So. That's the coloring book pages. Um, now let me move this stuff and I'll show you some other things that I got. Okay. So a bunch of index cards and they come out all different 
all beautiful. You can soak them for longer if you want a really darker color. You just let them sit in the dye while you're, you know, dyeing. This is from like just a single dip. Most of these are just a single dip. I did leave a few in. This is the spotting. So any kind of a rack or um, if you have any kind of racks, like oven, oven racks, um, cookie trays, different kinds of pans. This is, I think, a pizza pan because you want that, that heat to come into all those little holes and cook the bottom of your pizza crust it will always leave some kind of a beautiful mark so that's something to consider the other thing that can leave marks on your paper um, are folds you can fold your paper before you can crinkle your paper before you die and I should have done some of that to show you what it looks like um, clearly you can use doilies like plastic or vinyl doilies just um you know don't get too hot in your oven the other thing I should mention I, I didn't even finish telling you what to do here so we talked about the kind of avocados you want black ripe keep the skins in the seeds cut the seeds open put them in water add vinegar and baking soda and you know um then strain everything after it's boiled then put it all back on the heat on low heat with the nuts so then you've got a pretty rich dye you can strain it then again if you'd like it extra extra strained then when you begin dyeing your paper basically you're just dipping it and you're going to put it on trays you can dry this at you know warm temperature outside if you like um i live in canada so my time is kind of limited so i dry in the oven at 200 degrees um it takes about five to 25 minutes depending on how much paper you layer you may or may not want to layer your papers the papers sitting on top of one another will leave like a mark like if this is a piece of paper on the corner of another you're going to get a mark here from that piece of paper so just remember that if you want you know simple single pages lay them out that way um let me grab these. Sorry, I just have this big bag of dyed things. So yeah, more, lots of index cards. Um, then I also have these CD envelopes. And these were such a great find. I thrifted these. I never find any kind of CD envelopes. But they're nice, thicker paper. And I love the effects of how the dye took on here. It's like very watercolory, um, beautiful. I did some with the dots as well, and I'm really happy about these. So, yep, those back by. Um, then we also have um, Rolodex cards. So I had some Rolodex, little simple paper Rolodex cards. I love the variation on these. Um, again, these were just dipped and they come out all different, which is one of the nicest things about this. And then I had a few of these um, envelopes from Mr. Satellite Ink that I, I found thrifting. Oops. I was carding wool this morning, so on top of having avocado dyed cans, I probably have little bits of wool stuck to them. Um, you don't come here for the hand modeling though, right? So it's okay. So this is a nice textured paper. Um, it's, I, I don't know, like with this business, I guess it's a satellite company. I don't know if it still exists or not, but I just have the envelopes that I thrifted and they turned out really nice. So when you're dyeing envelopes, I recommend open them up and don't lay anything on top of the glue because it will stick to that other piece of paper. So we have envelopes. And then I had one uh, 45 record sleeve. And then I had found a bunch of these um, bridge scoring cards that like, they are really neat. It turned the black, so this was black writing and on some of them it turned it green and it faded it, which is so cool. So these, um, these score sheets for bridge, we dyed those. And I just find anything random that I like. Like this was a cord for um, some LED lights. Like these lights um, were wrapped around it. So I just grabbed that and added it to the pot. And it's cool. Uh, okay, so I think that's all the different paper things. So then the next exciting step.
So then you're left with, you know, a certain amount. By this time, hopefully you've used a lot of your liquid, but you probably still have a lot left. So what I do when I have a lot left still is I raid my lace bins. Um, let me move some of this. And I dye lace, I dye fabric, um, I dye whatever I have handy. This is why it's great when you're thrifting. If all you're finding is kind of boring white, you know, lace or whatever that doesn't really make you that happy, never fear because you can create beautiful colors easily. Um, so these are, these were from a wedding dress. They were very white. They have these sequins. Um, and then these are like collars that are lace. Um, and you're going to see like a lot of variation. You know, hopefully you can pick it up on camera. Like we have some darker spots on the edge here. So whenever you're dyeing anything on a flat surface, um, it does tend to collect on the edges, which I think is actually great. I love that. And I think we spend so much time like inking the edges of things to give them, you know, a frame and some depth. Um, so this naturally happens. Um, what else do I have here? So another of those collars. Then I had these, which are these large triangular pieces that I think probably are another dress collar. Um, these were all thrifted from like um, a Mennonite thrift store and they have a lot of these kinds of things that they um, use to make their dresses and things. Um, another of those collars. Just bear with me here. Sorry, I'm trying not to knock this all on the floor. So more of these collars, lots of those. Okay, um, and another of these appliques with the sequins. And then these collars, they're the same, but again, the color is different. Like, see, these are kind of bronzy pink, like, where then these are much lighter. So you can really get a lot of variation. And if you soak these for a longer period of time, you'll get a much darker color. Like I think this one spent a lot more time sitting in the bath, probably waiting for whatever was in the oven to finish before it got put onto the tray. Um, and then depending on the material that you've, you've dyed, you see the color variation here. So um, here we go. So this is a beautiful uh, lace with leaves. Um, and hopefully you can see that there's a lot of color variants. So I've got a large piece of this that I, that I was able to dye. Another, a few more of those appliques, a couple more, a couple more of these large collar pieces. So as you can see, I've dyed a lot of stuff and I still have dye upstairs. Then I've also got this great big piece of lace and see the color here is violet. It's entirely different. Um, and this is just because of the material. This is a cotton silk um, crochet sort of style lace and it's really pretty. It's like flirtily kind of just really pretty. So as you can see, the stained hands are worth it. Um, so for my next few videos, um, yeah, you're going to see these stained heads. I'll probably make a little comment in each of my videos about it. So please don't get tired of hearing it from me, but I don't want uh, newcomers to a new video to come and say like, what is wrong with her hair? <laughs> and I, I know people like to, um, <laughs> like to look at things like that so and also that's what I'm talking to you with is my hands right so um I think that's everything that I dyed so I just wanted to share this quick little avocado dyeing um you know video with you if you have questions let me know I know I've explained it a couple of times but it can be a bit random as I'm just kind of showing this to you and I'm not doing it as a tutorial per se um there probably are some tutorials on doing this if you just search on YouTube. But yeah, I had a great time. And this was, you know, most of my afternoon yesterday, just kind of while I was cleaning my house, I just would go back to the oven, you know, dip, throw it in. Like, so it's something you can do in the background, which is nice. And you end up with a lot of materials quickly. Um, I've had people ask me about paper packs and dyed papers in the shop because I know they've been out for a while. Um, I probably will do some little packs here of, a little bit of all of this I just have to get organized I, I won't I won't promise to a date on that um 
So yeah, I have a lot of things that are in the works, so stay tuned. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I would love it if you did. We do a lot of different fun things here, paper, fiber art, stitching, what have you, other randomness, and I have some really fun things planned for this year. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you're having a great day. If you're just jumping back into your new year, you're going back to work, I hope it's the best. I really do. So take care, everyone. Stay safe, and we will talk very soon. You'll see these heads again very soon.